AFTV Turkish, I enjoyed watching that game with you. That was a fantastic performance by Arsenal. 5-0, five, five star. Yeah. We keep on going. That's what we've got to keep on doing. Listen, um, the last few fixtures, we've seen an improvement in performance. You know, the results have come this season in terms of that period when we had a 10-game streak without losing, but the performances weren't quite there. Mm. Since the Everton game and that first 15 minutes of Southampton, top quality performance. Well, what's changed things? It's hard to really pin down what's changed things. Um, over the last few weeks, we've had problems with Oba, but then Martinelli stepped up, Odegaard stepped up, Emil smith Rowe stepping up. So them problems are in the back of our minds or the back of, you know, Arteta's mind. I think what's changed is a better atmosphere, new personnel, a fresher squad and belief, I guess. I mean, at the end of the game today, I know we haven't discussed the game yet, but at the end of the game, I think this is a key moment. Odegaard gives his shirt to someone in the crowd on his return back to the centre circle, Emil smith Rowe's going towards the crowd and they have a little joke together. They have a little push and they're laughing, smiling. I think that's a good indicator of the atmosphere behind the scenes. And that's something I've questioned for years. And I questioned it because we had similar personnel every year. We wasn't getting rid of the dead wood. This season, our starting eleven more often than not has been fresh, has been full of players that haven't let us down in the past. So I think the belief is there. The atmosphere behind the scenes looks to be an improvement. The big Aubameyang decision is in the back of our minds because not only the managers made a big decision, but the players have, you know, performed on the mm. pitch. So it's not holding us back. So I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe the youthful exuberance as well. That adds to it. You look at Martinelli, Odegaard, Emil smith and Saka. I just looked at the top scorers in the league and them four have 21 goals between them in the league and 11 assists in the league. That's very young mm. and good quality for, you know, what we would expect of them. Mm. And I just think it's just, you know, it's, it's pleasing to see. I don't really have the words for it right now because mm. I didn't expect this. You know, I'm not saying it's done because it's only the 19th game. This is halfway point, but we're top four. And there's, there's, there's something there that does put a smile on my face. There's something there that does make me think, can we get top four this season? And I never thought I would have asked myself that earlier on, especially at the start of the season. So it's hard to say what has changed, but it has changed. Mm. No, it's a way to Norwich. And everybody, you know, before the game is, you know, the expectation is the way we've been playing. The fact that Norwich are bottom of the league, go there, three points should be a standard for Arsenal. Yeah. But it's emphatic the way they've done it. 5 0. And Laurie did an interview before. He said it didn't flatter Arsenal. He didn't, did it? It could have been more. They, they were brilliant today, in control of the game from absolute start to finish. And it, I saw United go there the other day, and that was a touch and go until United got that penalty. So, you know. That they needed a penalty for it. I mean, mm. today, this is what you do against bottom of the league. If you've got any hopes of top four and anything further than that in the next few years or so, you do this to the bottom of the league team, mm. home or away. And that's exactly what we've done. First five minutes, got a goal. Similar to Leeds, early on you get a goal. And then you start seeing the players play a bit more freely, less pressure on their shoulders. And yeah, <laughs> Rob, it's hard for me to mm. um, kind of pin down where I'm at with Arsenal at the moment because after that Everton loss, it was like, have we really improved? But four games, five games since, I think mm. it's fair to say there has been an improvement. Are we going around? I know you've, I've interviewed you many a times over the years and you speak about the roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> now, have we crossed that roundabout? Because you're always talking about, you, the reason why, I, I, and I explain to people the roundabout, what Turkey always says, we go, we look like we're going, and when we get to the point now where we're supposed to go over the roundabout, we go around again. Yeah. There's another horrible performance and we go. But are we going over that roundabout now, do you think? I think so. And I think a lot of that work was done in the summer. I think, the, I think a big part of the roundabout was the culture at the club, a lot of the personnel at the club. And when you keep on going into the seasons with the same culture, the same personnel, you're bound to you know, hit the same obstacles you've been hitting every season if you're not getting it done. This season, fresh squad, halfway point, top Different four. Yeah, different culture mm. because you can see the youth in there. So the youth bring a different culture anyway. Mm. I think it's unfair to rely on the youth for a season. And I think January is a big one for us because what Arteta and the team have done so far is open the, 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 the door to maybe top four this season, which a lot of us dismissed at the start. January now, we do need something. You know, as much as we're in good form and, you know, our goal difference is in mm. the plus, we're in top four. We do need something to kind of not only get us over the line, but also add something, you know, add a bit more belief. What, what would you add? It has to be a centre mid or a striker. I think the priority for me is probably a striker 
Because like I said, with the four young players, with the 21 goals, 11 assists, I don't want to rely on young players mm. throughout the season. I think I've, you know, other times we've seen you can't really do that. It's not fair. So I think if we've got a striker in, in January, and he can hit the ground running, someone like a Vlahovic and Isak, not so much a Calvert-Lewin for me, but there, there is options out there. I think, ask me about top four if we get that striker and I'll be a lot more confident to say, yes, we can get it. Mm. At the moment, we're there. I'm happy. And it's game by game. Wolves is a massive test next. You know, Wolves what would you do with that Wolves game? I mean, kind of a bit of advantage for them because, you know, they, they haven't had to play today. Yeah. Um, they haven't had to play for about a week now, right? So they're going to be fresh, but 5-0, yeah. <laughs> you know, going away 5-0 and not exactly how to exert ourselves. Confidence, that helps a lot. Same sort of team or would you make a few changes? I'd pretty much go same sort of team. It, I, I don't know how long Tommy Asu and Cedric have had COVID for because mm. we got told today, but they might have had it since, well, mm. Cedric, no, but Tommy Asu might have had it from last Monday, Tuesday. So he mm. might be out of isolation soon or whatever it is. The right back for me today, Ben White, had a few iffy moments and against Wolves, you might be punished. Yeah, but try. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's it. But then again, Wolves yeah. haven't really been them, their attacking selves this season. Mm. Oh, well, I say them attack, they've never really been that forward in attack, but... Mm. Tough, tough test. I'd go with the same lineup if there's no, you know, return of Tommy Asu or Cedric. I'd go with the same lineup. And like you said, you know, one nil up early, sixty plus percent possession for the game. Norwich didn't really have much to offer. I think, you know, today was was a nice game to have before Wolves.